Hey guys, Gigi with Go Go Glam. I'm in the balloon studio today and I'm going to be showing you how to put together a witch's cauldron. For your witch's cauldron, you are going to need one 36 inch black balloon and you're going to need some 260 twisters as well as your smaller balloons to fill in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just put a list of the things that we used here so you can take a peek at that. I'm also putting little eyes of newt in there so I have these little eyeballs that we're going to add in at the end. We're actually going to be attaching everything today with rubber cement, no wrinkle rubber cement, instead of glue dots. But you can use glue dots. I just recommend for this thing, um, just because it's sitting upright and it's not sort of up and on the wall, um, the rubber cement holds it in place a little bit better. And then I actually just have a couple Ziploc baggies of sand to weight down my base. So something to sort of weight down your cardboard and then just piece of cardboard because you are going to make a base to sort of hold everything onto. Um, one thing that we've tried in the past when we first did this was not weighting it down or gluing it down to anything and it just tends to want to like roll around because the top gets heavy. Okay, so one thing you're going to want to do with your 260 twisters, um, first of all, you're going to want to have a few extras because these have a tendency to pop. Um, second of all, you want to fill it down to have kind of a little knob left, maybe, maybe a little bit less than that even. I would say about half a finger's length. Um, and then you're just going to want to squeegee the air kind of from here down. And then actually, um, these tend to fill up more around the top of them. You want to let some of that air out because you don't want them to be super full because they get really fragile and they will pop really easily. And for this part of the balloon, you definitely want to be more careful with that. Okay, so you're going to want to make a ring. Um, I will measure this across just to give you guys an idea of how big that is. And I will put that in the description as well. The next step is going to be to take your cardboard, um, take your ring, set it down, and trace the outside of it. Try to make it as circular as possible. Obviously, that's how you're going to want it done. And then I'm just going to put an X in the middle part, and that will make sense in a second. So I'm just going to take my scissors and cut this out. Um, if you have an exacto knife, it may be a little bit easier or um, a box cutter or something, but it doesn't have to be anything super pretty. We're going to cover it up. Anyway, I trim it down just a tiny bit when you're done here. The crappiest scissors known to man. Ugh. Cutting cardboard with scissors sucks, especially when they're like not good scissors. These are not my good scissors. And I couldn't find my exacto knife, so I'm stuck with them today. Not my recommended crafting tool. So I'm just gonna sit for a minute, let my hand rest. <laughs> Cramp. I have thriller claw. Okay, so my circle is bigger than my balloon, and I don't I don't want that necessarily, although you have you're gonna have kind of a back, so, um, but you don't want it to be bigger. So I'm actually just gonna like trim it down a little bit. And again, this is where having a better cutting tool is really, really helpful. But we're DIYers, right? We just do, we do whatever. We grab what's in the kitchen, in the drawer. Isn't that the point? You don't need your exacto knife. I'm just gonna wing it. Okay, so that's better. So you can kind of see, like, I could put the edge of my balloon like so. I'm actually gonna remark my my middle. Um, this is actually 100% where an exacto knife is going to come in because you're gonna want to cut it, cut through an X right here because that's where you're gonna pull the tail of your 36 inch balloon through um, to kind of secure it down. So. I'm gonna just try it with these. Not, I don't recommend this. I'm gonna take my rubber glue out and let it get tackier. Um, it's harder to work with on the balloons when it's super runny, so just let it kind of goop up a little if it's new. If you've had it for a while, you might be just fine. Make sure my sandbags are flat enough. Hoping I did these right. I sealed them. I have a heat sealer, so instead of using a Ziploc bag, I want the full. There we go. Yeah, those will be just fine. Spectacular. 
Okay. So while that is tacking up, I'm gonna inflate my 36 inch balloon and get that prepped. Reality being, I could probably inflate this bigger, but um, I don't want it to get oblong at all if I can avoid it. I wanna have a lot of neck left and I want the neck part to be as flat as possible. So if you find this is sloping upwards, let air out until it gets flat and push the balloon like this to help turn it so it's kind of round. So then you wanna tie the neck kind of tight to the base so that it doesn't get oblong there, if at all possible. There. So, ah! So I'm gonna go ahead and um, put my rubber cement around the edge here. You know, you wanna leave it long enough to get kind of tacky, but you don't wanna leave it for... This part isn't as, as crucial for it to be as sticky because it's gonna just sit. We're gonna give that a minute. I did want to say about the balloons, um, these are all, well, these are seven inch chrome and these are 11 inch balloons. So just under inflate them. For this project, you do want them to be kind of small, like so, like that. And you might have a few bigger ones too, but just kind of as a general, just to get it to, to come together and look like bubbles and look like bubbling. All right, so I'm, I'm going to attach this balloon here. I would strongly encourage you to do this and let this dry first. It's sort of not totally dry, but I'm being impatient, so. So away we go. So you're gonna pull the balloon tie through. Don't pull the knot past this part. So this is, it's just, just this part, just the end of the neck. The knot is on the other side. You don't wanna pull that through or this won't sit nearly as flat. So, but again, you know, if I just do that, it's gonna roll all over the place. It's, it's kind of okay. Another thing <laughs> I would recommend um, is putting, either putting black on your cardboard or using black paper to cover it first. I kind of forgot that if you don't push this all the way to the edge, you will kind of see it and you don't want to see it. But if it's black, you're not gonna be able to tell. It's gonna be on the floor. So I wouldn't stress too much about that, but you can just cover that with paper and be fine. I put the sandbags towards the back just because I want this to tilt forward just a tiny bit. Um, we're, we're just gonna create a, an illusion, but I will at some point tack this down because I don't want this kind of like bloop, 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 bloop. I will take a piece of rubber cement and tack that to it. Again, with this piece, you want to fill it almost all the way to the end and then you're gonna let out a bit of air at the top because you want this to be more uniform and um, you don't want it to be like overly filled on one side versus the other. And since we're gonna kind of cover these side seams, you don't have to worry so much about that aspect of it. First thing I'm gonna do is just tack the two sides down right here. I'm just going to make sure that I'm on the inside on both of them. Glue there, like so. And then just hold it and hold it until you know that it's staying there because I don't know, you ever glue something and you're like, yeah, it's there. And then you lift and it's like, no, I didn't, I didn't stick. Maybe I'm just impatient. Once that's glued down, you don't want to yank on it too hard. So you have to just be a little more ginger with it. Um, I'm going to do the back because I can brace this right here. I want to make sure that's kind of in place. Um, you'd think you would go to these sides right here, but I find that this wants to keep slipping back when you're working. So you hold it in place and just put it right here. Again, I would um, select your back. If, if the balloon is, if your balloon base has a front or a back or you feel like it does, well, it should actually. <laughs> it should have a tail. Where's the tail? Well, this balloon's so big, I can't see anything, you guys. Yeah, <laughs> this is my back, there's my tails. So, I've oriented myself properly, you never know. Always make sure, you need to have the whole thing done and have something sticking out and it's like, oh, sad. This does take a little longer than glue dots. So I just like this because I just don't want anything kind of moving. I want everything just to be exactly where it is. I'm just kind of walking around and putting little spots in here. I want to be careful with the front, it's okay. If I get a little up top here, because we're going to put balloons, so I wouldn't worry about that. Just try not to get it to drip down here. So you don't want it drippy. You really want it kind of tacky. 
might not be perfect, but it'll still look cute. Don't worry about perfection, guys. I just want it to look cute, right? Your kids are gonna love it. They don't care. You should have seen this horrible cake I made for my daughter when she was like two, three. It was a dog with measles. It was really bad. So, you know, we all have we all have things that we want to turn out perfect and they don't, but we can get it close. We can get it looking good. So I'm gonna tack this down now that I'm ready to start putting my balloons on just because I don't want this like weeble wobbling. I would like it to be somewhat stationary. Um, so, and I'm sure you can see that like the back of the cauldron is sort of up higher, but once you start filling in the balloons, it's not really gonna matter. You're only gonna see the lip a little bit. So I wouldn't worry terribly much about that. Well, I spilled my rubber cement everywhere. <laughs> Don't leave it on the floor next to your feet, guys. Um, so I have to be really careful over here. And I gotta let it dry so I can just rub it off my floor. <laughs> but I am killing it today. So I'm just gonna, I already have it on the balloon. I guess I'm just gonna put it, steer into the skin and put it where it is already. But I have to put some right here just to make sure I'm covered. And I kind of want the balloon nuts going towards the back at least to some degree so that I can hide them in the beginning for sure. And then I just want to create the base first and then we'll start stacking on top of it. I'm actually just going to paint a few spots on the balloon on the balloon where I know I'm going to be sticking things because that's going to make it easier. Yeah, so I didn't let that get tacky. You can see it just rolls right off. You really want it to get sticky for a second. It's kind of like eyelash glue if you've ever used it. Better if it's a little bit stickier. Okay, so for the side for the little bit of the drip, I actually want to take some five inch balloons. I'm going to just take pairs that I pre-tied and twist them around each other. So I'm just gonna do two, four, oh, six, eight. I'm just gonna tie those to a, t a nine inch balloon. So I just take the tail of this one and the tail from in here and tie those together that like that and then I'm gonna tack this one right here so then so you see how that's going to kind of drip down so I'm just gonna put that on the side right there I have extra tail I didn't cut this off so I can just tie it in as well oh there's so much glue everywhere in here you guys ah, once it's been tied into place so it drips just how I want it to and then I'm gonna start adding balloons in the middle and on top So that's where you have to be a little more careful, to be a little more selective in where your glue is gonna go because you don't wanna see it. You don't wanna, you want it to hold in certain spots. So I pre-position the balloon and look at roughly where it's gonna sit and land. And then I add the glue to it. All right guys, here's the finished look. I cut out a little bit at the end, but I just added in a couple of eyeballs and just filled out just a few. I think I just did two extra balloons back here. Kind of like spread the weight out a little bit. You don't want it to go too much one way or the other just because it is weighted, but it just does make it kind of move around a little bit less. I think if you bump it over and over, you could possibly pop that 260 on the bottom and that would be a bummer. The base would still hold it down. So it's not gonna go anywhere, it's just that the base of the cauldron would be gone. So just be careful with that. Otherwise, all you need is a handful of balloons and a 36 inch and some Elmer's glue. So I uh, just wanted to show you guys a different way of kind of tacking things down if you you know, don't have glue dots or you don't have another sort of way of doing it. You can just run to Target or the hardware store and grab that and you're set and it does work. It's, it can be a little messy, um, but for a project like this, I would say it worked really well and it's holding everything together really well. So uh, thank you guys for watching today. If you have any questions, please comment below. Otherwise, uh, check out our channel, check out our other tutorials and videos that we have available to you. Uh, thanks guys, happy Halloween.